Hi friends, it's Kirsten and welcome to another video. Thanks for joining me again today. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how to darn your point shoes, which describes this stitching technique right here. Um, it's pretty wonderful. If you find yourself frustrated with getting lumpy boxes or platforms that aren't flat or both shoes you get in the mail sickle the same way and you are so frustrated you feel like you just threw away about $100, Darning is for you. It also helps your shoes to last longer. It helps you to break them in more evenly. It helps you to have a better balance point, alignment in the shoe, all the benefits. It's just a list that goes on and on. It's quite wonderful. It might feel time consuming at first, like it might take you 30 minutes to do it in the beginning, but I promise you'll get faster and faster as you get more practice. And also depending on what thread you use, it might take more or less time. I will describe the options in the tutorial part of this video, but I do hope you enjoy it. I really hope you'll try it. This is not exclusive to advanced or beginner dancers on point. Anybody could benefit from this, especially if you get handmade shoes and you find, like me, wearing Freed's, that you get inconsistent platform or box shapes all the time. This will really help you, um, especially if you find that you pronate or you sickle too much or you go over your shoe too much or you're kind of hanging back. You can actually adjust the way that you align the darning on the edge of the uh, platform to help compensate for those technical deficiencies. So I hope that all your questions are cleared up in my tutorial and you learn a few cool new things. So please enjoy and I'll see you at the end of the video. Okay, so this is what the final product is going to look like. So satisfying, I know, I know. Well, it's not perfect, but it does a great job. So do notice that the seam or the, the thread is not along the outside of the box. It is kind of perched right on the corner so that it raises above where the platform was previously. And here's the thread that I'm using. It is um, crochet thread, so it's quite thin. It's a lot thinner than what I wanted to use, but in this case, it is multi-purpose. I'm gonna wrap around um, the box, or sorry, I keep saying box, I mean platform, multiple times to build it up to be thick enough. And it also can be used in kind of a larger size needle to do the stitching to secure the loop in place. However, if you can get a hold of like some clothesline or a much, much thicker uh, sort of thread or string, not sure what to call it, then you, wouldn't, you would skip this next step and maybe just wrap it around once. So notice how the edges of the platform are kind of rounded. It's really not too crisp of an edge, which means that these shoes tend to not be super stable and they tend to get soft. Um, like I said, I think in my intro, I, it tends to get soft towards my big toe. So as you see here, this is a little bit of a tedious process, but it works. So what I did with this thinner thread is as you can see I'm gonna make about six ish maybe seven loops around to build up um, that well oh, hey Alice oh yeah okay so she as usual tries to join into the party while I make my loops oh and then she gets feisty so plot twist I had to tell her to get lost I put her on my balcony is there time now she goes, sassy lady. I know this has nothing to do with darning, but hey, we all love Alice, right? Okay, so I made my loop a little bit too loose at first. Like I said, I want it to be perched a little bit more on the top of the platform so it rises above. So um, anytime I noticed it was too loose, I just pulled it a little tighter, made sure all the loops were even, so on and so on. This is what we are going to clip and then secure in place with the needle and thread looped in. So now for part two, I just take the needle and put it under as um, many layers of the fabric as I can. 
well, I think there's probably just one satin layer, but I get, I get as deep into the satin as I possibly can going under that loop. And then I just put the needle back through the remainder there and then secure it tightly. And that's gonna be that first loop, first knot, I should say. So I pull it really tightly. And throughout this whole process, you'll see that I adjust that initial loop um, that we're securing to the shoe. So this just repeats again and again. Put another stitch going under that loop of thread, and then I just take the needle back through the loop, secure it tightly, move on to the next. So in the beginning, I made my stitches a little bit too close together, but it's okay. This doesn't have to be perfect. As it went on, I made my stitches a little bit more separated, which also saved me some time. Don't worry about perfection here. Trial and error probably will be necessary, but I'm sure after just maybe trying this one time and dancing on the shoes, you will quickly figure out what you need to feel secure and what, what kind of strategies you need to use to be most effective. So I'd say as a rule, since you want to make sure that you're going to be able to get up over the shoe and have a nice line in your foot, um, I tend to, for my feet, I tend to put the seam along the back of the platform more on top of the platform. And as I go around the edges and towards the front, I continually put the loop of the string and all my stitches further um, away or down the side of the platform. I hope that's making sense. I just don't want you guys to think that um, you want to perch all of the stitches in the loop right on top of where the platform was because then you're going to end up with a tiny little circle and then a tiny little platform to balance on and it might not get you as far over your shoe as you'd like. But of course, if you put all of the stitches in the loop completely around the outside of the platform, not allowing it to rise up above um, or create a new surface, so to speak, I'm hoping this is making sense, that if you don't do that, then you kind of wasted your time darning. It's not going to add a lot of stability. Keep in mind that it might seem like a lot to do, but um, the stitches will flatten out over time as you wear it. And with that final stitch, all you have to do is just pull it really tight and then you can clip it. There's no fancy knot necessary. And there's the finished product. Alright everyone, thanks for watching. I hope you learned a thing or two and that you'll give this a try if you haven't already. Please let me know what else you'd like to see from me. I'm always open to video suggestions and I love seeing your comments. I do read each and every one of them. I don't get to respond to a lot of them, but I read and appreciate all of them. Well, I don't appreciate all of them. Some of them are kind of rude, but most of you guys are wonderful, so I'm here for the wonderful people. Be sure to check out my Instagram and Facebook accounts if you're not following me there already. I'm also on Patreon if you'd like to give a monthly donation to keep this channel up and running. I really appreciate my current patrons. Thank you to each and every one of you. If you're interested in joining the ranks, I've got the links down below to everything. Um, also, don't forget that I am on mentorly.com, which is a site where you can connect with me. I could be your personal mentor. We could have hour-long Skype sessions. Just go ahead and check out all the links and follow me, find me, whatever. Call me, beat me if you want to reach me. What's that, Kim Possible? Yeah, Kim Possible, yeah. So I'll leave you with that, and I'll see you next time. Bye!